Hi and welcome to Swedish Plant Guys. Today we have a hero called the Monstera Deliciosa, which I have here surrounding me in the studio. Uh, and uh, this is a plant that is called in Swedish, it's called Adams Rebben or Adams Rib. Uh, and I know that in America you also call it the Swiss cheese plant, which is all about these big nice leaves on the Monstera, uh, which looks like a rib cage or it can look like a Swiss cheese with holes in it, Wh whichever you prefer. Uh, now the name Monstera Deliciosa co actually comes from the fruit. It can produce a really nice fruit and it looks like a big green pine cone. And I've, I've heard that it's supposed to taste like a combination of banana, mangoes and pineapple, which sounds fantastic. I've never tried it myself, but uh, hopefully someday I will. Now, as usual, we will divide this video into four parts. You have the purchase, the uh, planting, the placement and the care of the plant. So if you want to skip forward, you can. Now beginning with the purchase. Uh, this plant can, uh, can be purchased, it's purchased in any size, in any form. You have the small versions like this one, it's in a 12 centimeter pot. You have a larger version like this one, which is in a 27 centimeter pot. And you can go even bigger like this one, where you have it growing on a uh, plastic tube uh, to support it. And uh, it can actually become over 20 meters high, this plant. So it can become really, really big. Uh, now it's a very, very easy to grow plant which means that when you purchase this plant, you should look for a couple of things. First of all, always choose the plant uh, at your, the grower or uh, where you're going to purchase it that has the most number of stems. Now, if we look at this one I have right here, we have one, two, three stems coming from the soil. Uh, now, if, there, if this was standing next to another plant that had four stems, that's the one I should pick. So the more number of stems only means that you will get a fuller and eventually also bigger and nicer plant. So you, you choose the one that has the most number of stems. Now also look at how many leaves it has. Uh, same thing here. The number of leaves is can be quite important because you want to have a very nice looking plant. So choose the one that has the most number of leaves on it. Now, usually you buy the Monstera for these nice, very uh, rib cage like leaves. But if you buy it very, very small like these ones, it doesn't have that uh, Swiss cheese looking leaves yet. Don't worry because they will come. They will come as soon as the plant reaches a certain, a certain age. When it, when it starts to grow a little bit more, it will develop these. Like this little one here, the, the latest, latest leaf here has gotten these uh, rib cage like leaves. None of the others have it. So it will produce that. You don't have to worry about that. And being a very easy to grow plant, you can actually purchase this plant in this small size and then let it grow in your house to become as large as you want it to be. And then also you don't have to pay very much money for it because uh, it can be quite expensive when it reaches a, big, uh, a certain size. When it come, becomes big, it's going to cost you a lot of money. So you can buy it very small and let it grow in your house. It's very easy. Now, as always, I want you to check the roots of the plant before you purchase it. Uh, and uh, the Monstera has a very thick, very extensive root system. So if you should happen to uh, stumble upon a plant that doesn't have that, and when you knock off the pot, it just falls apart, then that's not the plant you want to buy. Because it should look like this. You can see that the, the root system has 
completely covered this small pot and there is almost no soil left because it's that comprehensive and it should look like this and the, the root system should be white and uh, there should be a combination of thick roots and small fine roots as well like, as you can see here. If it doesn't have that, then maybe buy the plant somewhere else or buy another plant that has this nice thick root system. Also, you can check the leaves because this is a plant that wants very high humidity in the air. And if it doesn't get that, uh, or if it's a, a poor quality plant, you can have mechanical damage on the leaves. Now mechanical damage, uh, I don't have that on any of my plants here, so I can't show you. But what usually happens is that the tip of the leaves out on the leaf tip here, it turns brown and uh, it dries out. So it's, uh, it's very, very dry and it just it crumbles when you touch it. If it has that type of mechanical damage before you've even purchased the plant, then choose another plant. It should, shouldn't have any of those damages. Um, but if, you, if, it, if it should get those damages at your home, it's not a problem. You can deal with it and we will take that up during the care of the plants a little bit later. Now, this plant can flower, but you shouldn't look for any flowers on the plant when you buy it because I've been taking care of plants for over 20 years and I've never seen a Monstera inside that has flowered. It's very, very difficult to get it to flower. It needs a certain amount of humidity and it needs to be a certain age to really flower and produce the fruit. And sadly, you, will, you probably will never get that at home. So you can't look for it when you buy the plant. You buy the plant for its green, nice leaves and not for the flowers or the fruit because you will probably not get them. Uh, and be, be, being said that, it needs quite a, it's a, it needs humidity and it needs heat. So it's quite sensitive to cold. So when you buy this plant, uh, if you buy it in winter time or when you know that it's going to be very windy or cold outside, make sure that you put some uh, paper or plastic around it that you that you protect the plant so that that it doesn't get damaged when you drive home or when you take it home is it a warm hot summer day then it's not a problem but if it's in the winter time make sure to protect it moving on to when you get this plant to your home it's time to plant it in something now the Monstera can, it, it's not a fuzzy plant, it doesn't need that much attention to, to, uh, to it. You, you could keep it in this pot and just put it in an outside pot uh, or a larger container if you don't like this, how this looks. But you have to think like this. If you buy the Monstera, you usually buy it because you want to have these very big, very lush, uh, leaves. Now to get those big lush leaves you need to make sure that the root system really thrives. And think like this, the bigger the root system the bigger the leaves it, the plant will produce. So what I would do when I get this home is that I, I would replant this because as you can see it's been standing quite a long time in this small pot and the root system is, is literally trying to get out of the pot. And when it looks like this, I, should, I, I would repot it and in a bigger container. Now, the bigger the container, the better, because you want a big root system. However, if you put this small plant in a very, very large container with a lot of soil in it, there is a big chance that when you water it, you will give it too much water because the soil would just suck up a lot of water and um, that will mean that it will push out all of the air uh, for the roots. So it could be too much water for the plant. So my 
recommendation to you is to, when you re repot the uh, Monstera Deliciosa, you should repot it in a bigger pot and then repot it again later on in a bigger pot and just add the size to the pot as the, the root system grows so that you can uh, so that you don't you don't get any problems with the soil taking up too much water now even better is to of course plant this not in soil but in pumice now we have a video if you don't know what pumice is we have a video called all you need to know about pumice where we show you how to use pumice the right way and all the advantages this will give you but you could also plant this in a self-watering system uh, and we also have a video about that that tells you exactly what to do and that is perfect for the monstera because as i told you before it doesn't want too much water if it gets too much water the roots will be damaged and uh, they will start to decompose and the, the plant won't feel good at all and it will not grow and you will not get those big nice leaves so if you plant this in soil you need to have something in in in, um, in the pot that helps to drain the water from the soil it can be uh, leka marbles that you put in the bottom of the the pot or it can be gravel or stones or something something that does that makes the soil drain or makes the water drain out of the soil and end up in the bottom of the pot without touching the roots so if you plant it in soil use some sort of soil that has good drainage or make the drainage yourself inside of the pot uh, or use pumice or a self-watering system now moving on you have repotted your monstera and given it every reason to thrive in your home and get a real thick nice root system now where to place it in your home this is a very easy to care for plant so it can be placed almost anywhere so best placement i think should be in a northern window now if you are in the northern hemisphere like we are in sweden the worst placement is in a southern window where you get direct sunlight almost all of the day because direct sunlight will burn the leaves a little bit and uh, it will give you problems uh, with watering the plant because when it gets direct sunlight it it's not be it's it won't be able to absorb the water because a lot of the water is going to evaporate evaporate directly from the leaves so it sucks up water but it can't keep it in it can't use that water so the best placement is actually in a northern window where it gets a lot of light but no direct sunlight or you can place it a little bit into the room so it gets a lot of light but not direct sunlight um, if you do this it's going to thrive it's going to grow it's a very very easy uh, easy plant to grow what it also needs is a lot of humidity so uh, and here in Sweden that is a big problem especially in winter time because when it gets quite cold outside and the radiators go on and we have to heat our home what we're actually doing is that we are taking away a lot of the humidity in the air uh, that the plant needs so if you can if you then shower this plant as often as you can uh, you can just uh, use uh, some sort of a uh, spray canister uh, and maybe once a day or you can take it to the bathroom and uh, put it in your bathtub and rinse it off occasionally to help it get that humidity it wants if you have a home that gets very very dry in winter time then maybe this is not the plant for you because what will happen is that uh, it will get damaged by this low humidity uh, and it can also happen if you are standing it in a windowsill directly underneath a radiator uh, which also produces a lot of heat but dry heat what will happen is that a lot of the small leaves will start to die and you don't know why 
you've given, given it water, you've done everything you can to make it thrive, but small leaves are going to start to die. And you can see that it's going to start to hang a little bit. And the uh, nice green lush color will start to lose its color. It will fade a little bit. And that is because it cannot keep the water inside of the plant. It's going to evaporate straight out of these because these are big, big leaves and there is a lot of water uh, in these leaves. And if the, if the plant can't keep it inside, it, it, it's going to start to evaporate. Uh, so if you can, then help the plant as much as you can by rinsing it with water or using a spray canister to just moisten the, the leaves. With water, exactly, exactly. Uh, now another thing to consider in the placement is that, like I said before, it doesn't like cold. So if you have it on a windowsill and you know that in wintertime you open that window quite a lot, so you get a draft, a cold draft, that's not the place for this plant because it, it will get damaged. And you will see it uh, on the leaves straight away that it will uh, become uh, dull and uh, perhaps even get really damaged and that will you will get like brown spots on the leaves everywhere on the leaves it will just look very tired and that will be because of that cold so if you have it on a windowsill where you know that you will open that window uh, a lot during winter then move the plant during winter and then you can place it back during uh, spring summer and fall. So protect it from cold climates. Now moving on to maybe the most important thing and that is how to care for this plant. Starting with the watering. It's a very very easy to care for a plant so it's not a lot of fuss but you have to consider this and that, that is that it doesn't want too much water. If, if the plant stands in water, if the roots stand in water, they will die. So when you water this, make sure that you get a lot of water to the soil, that it sucks up a lot of water, but then make sure that the excess water goes out of the pot completely. Now you can do that by taking it to the bathtub and watering it there and let it rinse out or maybe in the sink in your kitchen. Uh, that is an easy way to do. If you have planted this in a closed container without any holes, then you have to make sure that you have some form of drainage in the bottom so that you know that you have leka or uh, uh, maybe gravel in the bottom so that, so that the roots will not stand in water. But, and how much water you have to give? Well, that's completely depending on how big the plant is. This plant will not need as much water as this plant, obviously. So it's, it's difficult to say exactly how much. But usually you have to water the Monstera once a week during the summertime and maybe once every two weeks during wintertime. So you have an approximation there. But always check with your fingers because it, need, it wants to dry out a little bit in between watering. So just feel the soil when it gets dry or it gets a little bit cold and not wet, then it's time to water again. Um, but if it's still wet, don't water it and wait a couple of days until it dries out. Now if you wait too long, which can happen sometimes if you're going away some, uh, or something and you come back, uh, then you will notice that the smallest leaves, th these small ones, are going to turn yellow and die. And that usually means that you have waited a little bit too long before giving the water. Uh, so feel the soil. When it starts to get dry, then you can water again. Now nutrients. How often and how much do we have to give our Monstera? Uh, well, it's not that dependent on nutrients, uh, but you want to give the Monstera nutrients uh, to make it thrive. And uh, you do that, I always recommend that you do that by adding nutrients to the water that you then give to the plant. 
uh, and always, always follow the instructions on, on the label of the nutrients that you use. You don't have to look for specific Monstera nutrients. You can buy any type of nutrients from your local store, but only give what they say on the box. And here is why. Because when you add nutrients to the water, what you're actually giving the, the plant is salt because the nutrients it's it's in salt form uh, and um, always always give it to the plant when the plant is feeling good because of this because it is in salt form because if the plant is feeling bad it's never a good way to give it nutrients because if you add salt to the water and add that to the plant when it's not feeling good. It's not going to be able to suck it up. It's not going to use it. It's only going to make it worse. So we only give nutrients to a plant that is feeling good. Now, if it's feeling really good, then you can add nutrients. You mix that with the water and it's, that salt water is not going to be bad for the plants. On the op other, uh, opposite, it's going to suck up the nutrients and add that to make it grow even more. And never ever add more nutrients than on the box because if you add more then you're adding even more salt to the water and that is never a good thing for the roots. So always follow the instructions. Now if we have watered this to perfection, we've given it nutrients, it's going to start to grow and it's going to grow fiercely. It can uh, grow four, five, up to ten leaves per season, depending on how well uh, you take care of it. And that means it's going to be big. So what do you do? Well, you can cut it. And you can cut it any time of year. And I'm going to show you exactly how to cut it. And by ten leaves, I, I mean per stem. So if you have like ten stems in your pot, and every stem produces maybe five, six leaves, Per season it's going to be really big so you need to cut it now this plant here is a little bit too big for what we are going to use it for so I know I can cut this one even if it's brand new uh, and we have one here a long long stem that I want to cut because I do not want to what I could be doing here is that I could help this by placing a bamboo stick here and make it go up instead. Uh, but that's not what I want with this plant. This plant, I want to have a girth and I want it to stay bushy and not grow straight up and be, become tall. So I need to prune it, I need to cut it back. Now we have a stem here that is too, too long. This one here. It's getting to be too big. Now, first step is to choose which leaf is going to be the leaf that you keep and which leaves are going to be cut off. Now I want to keep this leaf here and I want to cut off these two leaves here. Now I'm doing that by using a shearer like this. You can use a scissor, it doesn't, need, doesn't matter, it needs to be sharp. You can also use a knife if you have a sharp knife at home. And you're going to cut it in between two leaves. So we have the leaf I want to the leaf I want to keep is this one and the two leaves I want to cut off is this two and this is the leaf in between. So here on this stem in between these two leaves I'm going to make the cut. Now I usually, usually you make that cut in the middle, in between. But this, this stem is quite long so I'm actually going to make the cut a little bit closer to the leaf I want to keep. If, if it's a small stem here in between, then just cut it in the middle. But if it's long like this, you can actually cut it a little bit closer to the leaf you want to keep. Now just cut it right off like this. Now what's going to happen here is that it's going to produce a new bud or a new stem. And it's going to come from where the leaf meets the stem here uh, and it's going to continue to grow and make new leaves like this. But what I've done by cutting this is that I, I've kept this plant in a certain, certain girth, a certain bushy, and you can cut it as often as you want. It doesn't harm the plant. So you don't have to be scared by cutting this. And 
we still have the big, nice, lush leaves on it. It doesn't need to get even bigger than this. Now, what do I do with this? Well, you can do two things with this that you have cut off. The first thing is that these leaves are fantastic and uh, they're actually quite expensive in a flower shop if you want to buy it there together with cut flowers. So if you cut these off, never throw them away, just use them. You can cut them off from the stem like this. Then you put it in a vase like this. Now if you exchange the water in this vase every day, these can stand up to four weeks before they start to decompose or start to become brown uh, and you have to throw them away. Up to four weeks if you exchange the water regularly. And this little piece here you can actually use. Uh, now we cut it here uh, and if I want to make a new Monstera Deliciosa from this little piece here, uh, I just cut the little bit of the stem that, that is left and then I place this in water. Now I have to have what you have to have this node where the leaf is meeting the stem. One of those nodes, you, you could have cut off many, one of those has to be underwater. So when I put this in water, you have water down here and here is the water level and this is uh, out, up in the air. Now it will start to produce uh, new roots from where the stem meets the latest leaf here. And when they, the roots are approximately 10 centimeters long, then you can repot this in soil. Very, very easy. Now in your home, uh, you can get what a problem that we call mechanical damage. As I said before, the uh, Monstera needs high humidity. And if it doesn't get that, which, can, which uh, often can happen in winter time inside, it can get damaged. And what usually happens is that the tips of the leaves here are going to get brown uh, and uh, really, really dry. So when you, when you touch that dry, it will just crumble and fall off. That is what we call mechanical damage. Now it comes from the plant unable to push the water all the way out to the tip here. What happens to the water is that it evaporates before it reaches all the way out to the tip. If you get that, it's not a problem. You can just take the brown and just with your fingers take it away or cut it off with a scissor like that. And you, to prevent this, you can also help the plant by spraying it with water regularly preferably every day. If you get the problems with mechanical damage on one of your monsteras, start to, start to spray the plant with water to help that mechanical damage to not come. Now, when the plant is feeling well and it's starting to grow, uh, it's going to produce something called air roots. Now we have them on this plant here. It looks like this. These are air roots. They are not growing from the soil out of the pot. They are actually growing from the stem and free hanging in the air like this. Now, the plant uses these air roots to pick up ox oxygen in the air. And it needs them to uh, thrive and, and be well. But Eventually, when the plant gets to be quite old, there are going to be a lot of them because they will produce new ones all the time. Um, so what can you do? We usually we get the question, can I cut off the air roots? The best thing is always to leave them alone. Never do anything with them. But there are two things you can do which doesn't harm the plant but it keeps it from growing quite as fiercely as it could. Uh, and the first thing is that you could cut them off. But when you cut off the air roots, you only cut off one third to maybe half of all the air roots on the plant. And when you cut it off, you cut it off all the way into the stem like this. 
So I can actually show you here. You can cut it off right here. So, and all of this would go, go away. But only cut off one third up to half the air roots at a time. And then you have to wait a couple of years and then you can make a new cut. But always keep half or more. Uh, now the second thing you can do is that you can lead the air roots down to the soil. Uh, you could put this air roots on the soil and maybe even push it down into the soil a little bit. What will happen is that this air root is going to be a combined air and root root. <laughs> so it, it's going to be both best of both worlds. It's going to be a part of the root system, but it's also going to be an air root. So you can lead it down into the soil. Uh, but as I said, when they get really a lot of them, you're going to have to start and cut, but never cut too many at a time. Now the last thing we're going to uh, pick up during the care of the plants is of course pests. Now it's not often that you get pests on a monstera. Uh, it rarely, rarely happens, but when it does, it's usually mites. Now mites are microscopically small, very, very small. You won't see them with the naked eye. You have to, you have to enhance them to be able to see them. So how do you know that they are on the plant? Well, mites always attack the newest leaves first. This is the latest leaves on this small plant here. So that is the one that's going to be attacked first. Now this is the dessert for the mites. This is the best part of the plant for them to start biting into. Uh, and when you see that the newest leaf, it, you can start seeing that something is wrong. It's, uh, it's losing its shiny, nice exterior. It's starting to turn a little bit yellow in color. Then you might have a mite problem. No pun intended. Uh, and what do you do if you get that? Well, you can go out and buy pesticide from your local store uh, and just follow the instructions on the bottle. Make sure that the pesticide can take care of mites because not all pesticides can take care of mites. So read on the bottle that it can take care of mites. And then just follow the instructions. And usually if you have gotten to that point where it's only the newest leaves that have been attacked by mites, it's fairly easy to get rid of them. They will die after one or two uh, sprayings with this pesticide that you have bought. But you can also do it yourself without pesticides. What you do is that you take the plant, you put it in your bathtub or you take it outside and just rinse it with water. Just rinse it off and you do that once a day for two weeks. If you do that, the mites will fall off. And why you have to do it during two weeks is because when you rinse it, all the mites that are, are on the plant is going to fall off, but the eggs won't. So the next day, a couple of the eggs will hatch and start, they, they will start to produce new mites and so on. So when you go in day number two and rinse it, the new mites will fall off and you will have a little bit less of eggs and day three, etc. But if you do that for two weeks, you will get rid of all the mites on your plants. Now, like I said in the beginning of the video, uh, the Monstera deliciosa actually flowers and can produce a very nice fruit. But you will probably never have that in your home because you don't have the humidity, you don't have the light, you don't have the circumstances that is needed for the plant to produce this. Uh, now, I, I have seen specimens uh, inside of people's homes that have gotten the flower and have gotten the fruit, but it's usually on a plant that is maybe 10, 15 or 20 years old. So don't buy this plant uh, hoping to get it to flower because you probably won't get it to flower. And uh, also consider if you have uh, cats at home 
that the leaves are a little bit toxic. They are a little bit acidic, which means that if a cat starts to nibble on it, or if you should eat this leaf, uh, your stomach won't like it. It's, it's, not, it's not going to kill you, but it, it's a little bit toxic. So if you have a cat, this is not the plant for you. Okay, everyone, that is all you need to know about the Monstera Deliciosa. If you like this video, please don't hesitate to subscribe and hit that bell as well so you know every time we put out a new video for you. That's everything for today. Uh, until next time, hi dog.